Another infrastructure disaster in America. One person is dead after a section of busy highway collapse in Philly after a tanker truck carrying flammable cargo exploded beneath an I-95 overpass there. Officials predict that the road will be closed for months and that is setting off a wave of traffic nightmares. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg pledging to give whatever resources are needed to rebuild. The entire region affected by this will have the full support of the United States Department of Transportation for as long as it takes to get that restored to normal. It's a cruel reminder of the importance of our infrastructure, but we have been surrounded by reminders of the importance of our infrastructure, which is why we're coming together at such an important moment. Mm. That speech reminded me of another one that we play on this by another person in the administration. Uh, the latest disaster has some calling into question Buttigieg's obsession with equity over actually fixing America's crumbling infrastructure. The Transportation Secretary launching a $1 billion pilot to build racial equity into roads and has spoken in the past about how construction workers are not diverse enough. There's an extraordinary opportunity right now to make sure that more uh, women and workers of color are entering the building trades. So when, when you're moving a trillion dollars through the economy, about half of which is for transportation, those proportions are so great that if we do it right, you should be able to look back at the 2020s later on and say the right choices were made around infrastructure spending. Jesse, it is something to see infrastructure like that crumble, and we know that we need to do things for infrastructure, but this is going to cause a huge amount of problems in that area for months. Well, that was a racist highway that deserves to die mm. an ugly death. I can't believe you guys are piling on Mayor Pete. Mm. It's not Mayor Pete's fault, this tanker crash, Dana. Try to be a little fair. You know, we take a lot of shots around this table at politicians, and <laughs> I admit, I've participated in some of this partisanship, but this is a moment where we need to say, this was just an accident, and these things happen. And if you think this is an artificial stance, you are dead wrong. You are dead wrong. People died. We shouldn't be politicizing this. Maybe this will take 45 years to fix because you have to grease all the right people in Philadelphia. Fine, but it's important that we realized that this was a racist highway and these things happen. Is that right, Harold? Well, I think part of what Jesse's <laughs> saying is, is, is right, that I think, I say this a lot, but I think two things can be right. We need more equity in things, but we need to fix things. You think about what happened. I thought the judge, I didn't give her credit. I gave her credit after the show. I texted her. You talked uh, last week about uh, East Palestine and how we have kind of forgotten that in our narrative. The people there have not, and not to say that the, all the local politicians have, but it's not part of the national dialogue. We talked on this show when that happened. We needed an inventory to be taken of how many railways around the country may have similar challenges as those, as that, that, those railways there. It would be, I it would behoove the secretary, and perhaps they have this information and we should be sharing it. Are there other bridges, uh, are, there other, are there other parts of I-95 that may be vulnerable to collapse with an overheating? And it's terrible what happened underneath the bridge, underneath the passageway that made this happen. Uh, these are the things that politicians should be focused on. You're right in one regard. This was an accident. And to, uh, you, you can't to try to blame something other than it being an accident. But, but I think where you really blame people is if they don't begin to think forwardly about what can we do to ensure that something like this doesn't happen again. And that's, that's what I don't hear enough in politics. That's why I was pleased to see Governor Newsom say what he said about the homelessness issue and crime issue. He owned it. Mm -hmm. we got to own these challenges and figure out how, more importantly, how we fix them. What do you think, Judge? Well, I think that I know that Pennsylvania got $11.3 billion for highway work uh, and that 51 percent of, uh, of Pennsylvania roads are considered poor. There's no secret that work needs to be done. In addition to that, apparently the uh, American Society for Civil Engineers gave Pennsylvania a D. I think it's a minus for their bridges and roads. So the question that I have is, after this uh, uh, truck had an accident where a petroleum-based product blew up and there was a fire and the bridge came down, is anyone surprised? I mean, we already know the roads are poor, and we already know that the civil engineers have said they're poor. We already know Pennsylvania got $11 billion for roads and infrastructure, and then they're going 
going to give Pennsylvania another $6 million, uh, according to Buttigieg, that they need. Why do they need another $6 million when they got $11.3 billion? And let's talk about the fact that this is going to take forever. There's 160,000 people a day who travel on this I-95. Well, let's compare, if we want to compare, as a Newsom so great at this. Uh, apparently, after Hurricane Ian in Florida, Pine Island Bridge collapsed in Florida, and Governor DeSantis fixed it in four days. Yeah, okay? And they're going to be waiting too. months. That's yeah. what the Democrats do. The other thing that happens, Greg, we saw this with the COVID money, and it's happening in the infrastructure bill, too, which is they pushed money out so quickly mm -hmm. because they wanted, we wanted to get money out there. But one of the things that we know, in looking back, is that there was not enough vetting and a lot of fraud. Yeah, there's a lot of fraud. There's been so much fraud, I don't even believe those numbers. <laughs> um, he isn't thinking forward, uh, to your point, Harold, because he's too busy looking backward. So I would not blame, obviously, this, uh, this thing on him, except that he's constantly blaming everything on racism. And that is looking backward instead of forward. The equity choice is impossible with different cultures, you, you, you can't have the same equity for everybody. It's just the way things are. Uh, you know, to his credit, he got me to look up, you know, the whole point of redlining and yeah. everything of like that and the systemic racism. But every time I look up at that, I always find out the same thing, and that is that 78 or 75 percent of the people that live in those districts aren't black, right? They're just poor. Yeah, they're just yeah. poor. So blacks rank third in population behind um, Hispanic, Latin, and white. I think white's number one. But because when you put it through the prism of racism, nothing gets solved. And I think that's what's happening here with infrastructure now is that he's really good at, at playing the, you know, the, the, uh, what the media wants to hear, but he's not solving any problems. So I would say to him to get the big stuff solved before you jabber on about systemic racism and construction. Every time there's a transportation crisis, he always seems like He's the first, he's the last person to know. He never sees anything coming except for the, the reporters. <laughs> then he's there. But here's a great question. He mentioned it slyly. Do this study. Please do the study on why there are no female construction workers. Come on, have you ever, we've been on the planet 50 some odd years. Have you ever seen in New York City where the, the capital of construction, a female construction worker walking on a girl. I've never seen do one. Do you think it has something to do with a lack of upper body strength? No. I or was do you gonna, think it's discrimination? I think it's people like you, Jesse, who whistle at them. <laughs> it's, I call it reverse whistling. <laughs> but, but, well, I mean... <laughs> I'm not going to say something. Don't no, say do, it. do, do it. Because no. you do it. The old Jesse would have, not this Jesse. <laughs> yeah. But it is interesting, isn't it? That, like, that's the one. I've like, seen them but, in but, Westchester, not New York. But what I think they're talking about are women owned firms. Yeah. Women -owned and they firms. whistle at me. Yes. So I don't feel do. the need to whistle back. I'm going to go. I'm just going to walk out on that thing by myself and, and say there are biological wear, differences. What are you wearing when they whistle at you? What, what am I wearing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co host, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.